you're bringing up a thought here that a lot of people don't think about. You, the ideal, like in a movie, is that you're always thinking about the arena stage, and that's the only thing that's on your mind as you're working as a musician. That 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 greater idea is always there, looming consciously. Where I don't think it was that for us. It no. certainly wasn't for me. It went in very short little stages, like one day. I'm going to be the king of Gazaris. Right. <laughs> one day we'll be the top guys at the Starwood. Hey, with us, it started out with one day we went to practice piano. <laughs> right? <laughs> from, yeah. from there, it went to, okay, he started playing guitar, I, I started playing drums, then we swapped because he had better on drums than me, and it went on from there. It, well, it, but you're right, it was small steps. It wasn't uh, this big dream that we had. It was basically uh, the need to survive. It was in... Oh, but it was great fun. Oh, yeah. I know, the beauty of it, man. You see, you have your instrument, you set up somewhere, and you have this this thing where you can make the people in the room dance and have a good time. Doing you know, and, what you like uh, it's, to do. It's great, yeah. Tone is one of the most important things about this band. Yeah. Yes. It's one of the things that really separates this band from everybody else in our genre. It's it's our voice. How do you mean? It's It's my voice. You know, um, a lot of it has to do with what's just the way I play, you know, that you can't remove it whether you like it or not. You know, like in the old club days, <laughs> I remember you guys going, why can't you make it sound like the damn record? I'm going, sorry. <laughs> that was merely a financial <laughs> uh, <laughs> consideration. That was a financial see, imperative see, there you go again. that we yeah, had to struggle with. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, you, you know, in the club days, it was difficult to sound like other people. So I think it's inherently in, in all of us, not necessarily every musician, you know, but I think just like you, only sound like you. You know, some singers can sound I, like anybody. I consciously try to sound like other people still yeah, you to can. this day. And can I. And, and I, can I. And I laugh when nobody gets it. Because to me, it's just so obvious I'm imitating right. so-and-so. But nobody else can. You know, <laughs> it's like if you caught me, i go, it's an homage. You know, it's, uh, it's in tribute. But nobody ever caught me because no matter what, they go... Oh, that's very Dave. <laughs> and I'm walking away going, no, man, that's Ziggy Stardust. I mean, what are I you talking about? That's the guy in the Stones. You don't, you didn't get that. It's almost funny to Dave, me. Dave, come on. I mean, when we used to play the clubs, we sounded pretty silly playing some of that stuff. It sounded different. It's, different. It, yeah, it's, different. it sounded like well, like it's us. your thing. It sounded like Black Sabbath playing, you know. <laughs> yep. <laughs> you know, it, it was almost like a. Uh, it didn't sound like anything like a record. Clearly, it didn't. Yeah. But that's one of the attractive things. We yeah. were representing a, a neighborhood, and it was adding just maybe a little bit of girl friendliness to a heavy rock sound. We're a hard rock band from the 70s and 60s yeah. kind of a thing, you know. Um, when we played the club songs like uh, uh, It's Your Thing and Get Down Tonight was another one there. It was kind of like a reality series game show challenge. Yeah. Like, let's take the song with the most brass and the most chicks in the background yeah. and the most rhythm section, etc. And see how we would do it. And yeah. see how a three-piece would do it. But you remember, we would always try to do the solo the same as the song the first time, then we'd do another verse, and then we'd do the Ed solo. Yeah. You, re you recollect? Oh, yeah. And then yeah. it would, you began to create yeah. within, you know, whatever. It we worked well. We, we worked a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We did five 45 minute sets a lot. I think a lot of people enjoyed our take on things. Oh, totally. <laughs> well, we also had this, that spirit, you know? Yeah. If you, if you watch a lot of, uh, the old dancers on on uh, from the movies in the 30s and the 40s, their spirit uh, is you know that's in a lot of what we do. You know a lot of that vibe. Um, I think we're one of the bands that really still we talk about having to make the bread and we talk about our hard lessons in uh, uh, well you got to balance out the rent with the uh, the vision, but. Uh, very few of our colleagues still enjoy playing. Oh, yeah. You know, do you feel that? Very, very few of the guys yeah. who get past 10 years, it seems like a lot of hard work in there. Do you feel that? No, it's... If, you, if you enjoy playing, you're always, gonna, you're always going to improve. You, you might not get faster, you might not get uh, louder, whatever, the, whatever the, the definition of better is, but you will become more refined.
Yeah. And when you can do that, that is a challenge, you know? You can continue to learn and, and make those, that, that's what keeps it interesting. Well, you have to because enjoy doing it. Not necessarily. No. <laughs> I, mean, I, I, I see a lot of folks out oh, there. Oh, no, I mean, know, other people, yeah, yeah, yeah. Through. But I mean, well, we still enjoy what we do. Uh, otherwise, I wouldn't do it. What would you do? What else would you do? I don't know. Uh, you've, you've never done anything for a living that, but well, music. That's, that's, kind of what, that's kind of what keeps me enjoying doing it. <laughs> Very cool. When did you guys decide you were going to be a band and make money at it and go to the arena? It wasn't about the money. It was, you know, I remember... You know, it. support yourself. That that's what you were going to do for a living. And you were going to make records and follow in the footsteps of who? Who'd you follow? For me, it started with the Beatles actively. When I saw the Beatles on Ed Sullivan, right. I knew I was going to be in a rock band of some sort. You know, Dave Clark Five for me. Yeah. At what point did we decide to do that? Um, I think when we played those first gigs as as the Broken Combs, you know, and you see what, what kind of an effect you can have on people. Which, Ed, who, who were the Broken Combs? Oh, it was Ed and, and I and, and three other guys. I, I was on saxophone. We played Ed. at lunchtime at uh, Hamilton Elementary School. And we played at an assembly. Out in the squad. Well, also that assembly and some other, some other yeah, stuff yeah, that yeah. we played at. Yeah. But the thing was that, I, I know it sounds kind of shallow, but it's addicting to play in front of people that at the same time had that that exchange between an audience and a, and a performer. It's great, um, it's unpredictable. And of course the girls. <laughs> it's a big part. That's the yes. first thing I remember. I was in fourth grade <laughs> we did that gig. I'm going, hey man, all of a sudden I got girlfriends. It's like Napoleon yeah. Dynamite says, you gotta have skills, man. You gotta have skills. You ain't getting no girls. You gotta, you pick what is, I'm clearly right there. I totally get that. For me, it was the Beatles, and I knew it was I, to the point where I was in two different lip sync bands, just with the other kids, where we would learn the Beatle tunes, mm -hmm. and then we would put on a show for the parents. Right. Then we put on a show at the class, at the school uh, assembly, assembly mm -hmm. you know. But we rehearsed it routinely. We went through a thing. One of the guys, one of the kids, had a uh, an actual Beatles suit, uh -huh. you know, like that. I didn't sure. wear the Beatle wig, but, you know, it was very, uh, we took it very structuredly. I'm we we to... wore the turtlenecks, right? Yeah. yeah. That was the Dave Clark Five look. Yeah. But, um, again, it's just, it really, it really boils down to if you enjoy what you're doing, then it, it wasn't so much an objective that we're trying to reach in terms of uh, where are we going with this. It, it just, it just happens, sort of. And, and I understand that nothing really happens by itself, but. I always dug the prep. Uh -huh. I always dug the rehearsal. I always dug the designing the stuff, and the it's like a like a pack of dogs going, okay, where are we going? Where are we going? That's we even looked like each other at one point when we started touring on the road. Remember when we all had the same shoes oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 and, the, yeah. and the same leather jackets? We looked like the same my family. Ankle too many times. Yeah. We all smoked the same cigarette. We used the exact same uh -huh. slang that was peculiar to ourselves. Do you follow? Mm -hmm. it's, we were we on the same had, bus. We had the same bus, the same everything. Yeah, I, we're, that still trips me out to this day. All those years we were on one bus. Yeah. Plus, plus the security and the lighting guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I was I just describing to uh, uh, Dana here, one of our camera women, you know, who's running the show here. Um, I was flying... Uh, back from New York, she says, do you usually fly first class? I says, let me tell you about before first class. <laughs> Remember the bus in England? Oh, yeah. yes. When, oh. <laughs> uh, put the Halliburton's in the middle, and yeah, that was our bed. <laughs> and and yeah. I'll start to describe, feel free to chime in. If the owl is the aisle way, there's two armrests here and two armrests where Ed is. And like climbing into a rocket module, you had to slide down sideways, put one leg over the armrest uh -huh. on top. And one underneath. And one underneath. She didn't believe me when I was no, telling her. this is an actual <laughs> touring bus for tourists. Yeah. Not a no tour box. I mean, just, just seats. In the windows. Part of the rock. In the windows, you know, it was a regular. And you're doing a gig every day. And yeah. you had to slide every your day. legs underneath. And we did 23 shows in 25 days. Yeah. Touring. Yeah, I didn't yeah. even know England had that many cities. Neither did I. Huh? 
The only thing I remembered about England before I got there was Mark Twain's expression, 22 religions and one sauce. <laughs> <laughs> it is one sauce, HP, remember? Yeah, right, right, right. And this was when, before there was satellite, before there was internet, before oh, yeah. this was late 70s, yeah. and it was uh, four channels of BBC television, yeah. and rock and roll was... This was before CNN. It was yeah. one CNN hour of rock and roll. Remember, uh, yeah. we'd go, this is the leading rock and roll show in the northern UK. And you go, show? <laughs> yeah, it's on Wednesdays from 4 to 5. Here, let, me, <laughs> let me ask you a question. Do you remember where we were when we found out our first album went gold? Aberdeen, Scotland. That's right. <laughs> and, what and, what, and, what, and what happened there? What happened there? Uh, After the gig. I don't recollect. Well, oh, man, we were doing human pyramids <laughs> and trash the hotel. We took uh, shoe polish and wrote our logo all over the walls and stuff. And the next morning, the cops came, and they searched. I don't remember. <laughs> they escorted well, us they, out of the they country. They escorted and us back. out of the country, but for what reason? Not because we wasted their hotel. Why? Right because over. one of our crew stole a pillow. <laughs> <laughs> they searched every bus. And they, they, and all we're saying is, hey, come on, somebody coughed up the damn pillow, and nobody coughed this, it up. This so sounds very us. familiar. They escorted like us one, to like the Rudy border. or something. Yeah. Actually, it was Douglas Alexander. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <was> the sound <laughs> guy. But they escorted us to the, 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 the border and the, said, don't ever come back. And we never yeah. went back. Very the only familiar. Time. I remember the pillow. Yeah. Somebody had swiped the thing. Yes. We were all scared shitless because they thought they were going to nail us for, for the damage to the hotel. It was just a damn pillow. Yeah. I remember that. I this. thought that was hilarious. I remember we drank Glen Morangi. And I, and, I, and I remember singing the, the lines over and over again. It was a tune wedgie. You could not, I couldn't get it out of my head. You take the high road and I'll take the low road and we'll drink the Glen Morangi. <laughs> you take the high road and I'll take the <laughs> and volume you know but I remember singing that all night as, <laughs> and as we marched around and whatever um, <laughs> describe a describe a gold Halliburton because this is not something you ever see well it was a, a state of the art suitcase with, with a combination on it and, you know it was, it was like James Bond to us and they were all gold, yeah. Yeah, like a burnished, anodized gold aluminum or something they, they like They look this. like something a film crew walks around with, you know? But they're all identical, and you can line them all up, and it looks like something has landed, you know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Of, of, of a large 007 uh, attache case. <laughs> yes, and, and you see them, people put microscopes in them, but nowadays they're black, burnished, yeah, 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 burnished yeah, yeah. powder black. Ours were polished gold. And, and we put... Uh, and everyone had to. Yes, everybody, we dressed the same, yeah. we had the same luggage, and it would be towers of that same gold leather jackets. Stuff. And you put your, all of your decals all over, yeah. everywhere that you dig, you put it all over the gold yeah. luggage. Nowadays, you The wouldn't. only problem is one time, all, all it takes is one time of overstuffing the suitcase, mm -hmm. and the thing would tweak, and it would never, look, never close again. Well, you'd have to carry an implement to, <laughs> 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 to pop it open. The first time, do you remember going platinum? I remember, no. I remember the manager at the time, Marshall, well, I won't say his last name, giving us platinum uh, VHs, necklaces, necklaces yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. remember? I still I'll, have mine. Do you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The platinum necklace yeah. and with gold-like chain, rolled chain. Mesh chain, chains. Yeah. These are expensive items. Um, I'm glad you have yours because we paid for them. That's right. <laughs> that much I remember. Yeah. <laughs> we we discovered he Here charged you go, them fellas. to us. Oh yeah. Congratulations, and right, then right. we got the bill for him having yeah. them made. Huh? How many managers have you guys had at this point? I've had five. <laughs> That's it's hard, it's, hard, it's hard to keep track of them. Yeah. That's uh, uh, ultimately. Uh, the, the problem with making music is you make music and the other people do the business, and that's just the way it is. You know, and we leave that part alone until. Uh, I re I remember doing the business at the Starwood. My get a raise pants. Remember the ones with all the pins in them and everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I would I go up and ask the guy for a raise. I try and look as poor <laughs> as possible. Well, what a pair of those. <laughs> 
you guys be doing sound check, and I'd be going, no, you don't understand, 125 isn't getting it. Your, <laughs> your van is a couple extra bucks for we you. We need yeah. crew guys now. We have to pay for crew guys yeah. now.